Welcome to the ICE podcast, supported by the U.S. Soybean Export Council. The topic about misconceptions about polity, poultry will be addressed by Dr. Rana Day. Dr. Ajit Rana Day is a veterinarian by profession. He is a reputed veterinarian who has been recipient of a number of awards. He has been associate dean at Mumbai Veterinary College and University. He has been head of poultry sciences and animal and fisheries sciences at Nagpo and uh, he is very reputed veterinarian who will put us wise about certain misconceptions about poultry. Uh, let us welcome Dr. Ranade. Hello, my name is uh, Professor Dr. Ajit Shankar Ranade. I am working as uh, Dean at uh, Mumbai Veterinary College which is attached to the Maharashtra Animal and Fisheries Sciences University which has the headquarters at Nagpur. And today I'm going to talk about the misconceptions of poultry or misconceptions about poultry. In the sense, the misconceptions about rearing of poultry, poultry farming, and the misconceptions about the products that are available from the poultry farming, namely the eggs and the chicken. Now, as you all know, Human body needs a lot of nutrients and one of the most important nutrients which human body needs is the proteins because the proteins are the building blocks of the body. And so it's the quality of protein that we consume matters a lot in terms of providing good protein to the body to serve the purpose. Proteins as I said are the building blocks of the body. They will help in construction of the body, maintenance of the body, repair of the body and above all the proteins will also play a very important role in building up the immunity in case of human beings. Immunity or the disease resistance is very important especially in the present scenario where you know the chances of getting infection from outside are more. You need to strengthen your immunity and be strong so that you can avoid all infections. One of the means you know by which you can do that is to increase your immunity and for that you need to increase your protein consumption and especially good quality protein consumption. Now when we talk of good quality protein consumption the first and foremost thing which comes to the mind is the animal origin products and in that the products coming from chickens the eggs and the chicken meat are extremely important. Now, if we talk about the composition of egg, then on an average, the egg has about 11 to 12 percent of protein. So, approximately, an egg which weighs about 60 to 65 grams will have about 6.5 to 7 grams of protein. In addition to that, eggs have a lot of other nutrients. Amongst that, the minerals and vitamins are extremely important especially when it comes to fighting against the stress is concerned or it is building up of the immunity is concerned. Now calorie contained of the eggs normally about 76 to 80 kilocalories is the calorie content of the eggs which is by and large about 3% of the total requirement of the human body in case of males adult males and about 4% uh, of the total requirement of the body of an adult female. So the egg as I said is a nutrient dense food has got protein as well as the calories in, in that. A lot of fear people have in their minds about the cholesterol content of the egg. Yes, just like other animal origin products, the eggs and the chicken meat, they have cholesterol in it. But remember, cholesterol is a very, very important and essential nutrient for human body as well. So about 180 to 220 milligrams of cholesterol, which is the content of the egg, is not at all dangerous because the human body requires on an average about one gram, that is 1000 milligrams of, of cholesterol. And cholesterol serves a lot of functions as you can see. In addition to that, the most important function is synthesis of hormones and as you know, 
our body is completely governed by the hormones when we are growing it's the growth hormones which take the charge of the body and after reaching the adulthood it's the sex hormones which control the body so generation synthesis of hormones is very important and cholesterol serves that purpose now if you talk about other things proteins of course yes lot of vitamins except vitamin c the egg contains almost all vitamins and all of them are in abundance and as far as the proteins are concerned whatever is the protein the egg has 97 percent of that is bioavailable meaning that it is immediately utilizable by the human body then if you look at other vitamins vitamin e vitamin b6 b12 other b complex group of vitamins very essential for neuromuscular coordination and very essential in all the enzyme and the metabolic pathways which are running or which are going on in the human body especially the next three important nutrients iron selenium and zinc these three nutrients they are abundantly available in eggs and these three are related with the immunity as of now in this particular era of you know chances of covid 19 infection as i mentioned we need to have strong immunity and these three important nutrients iron selenium and zinc are very essential for that in addition to that choline lutein and zeaxanthin are also present which serve the purpose now if you talk in terms of chicken meat then the chicken meat has got about 21 to 22 percent of proteins in that and similar to the eggs it has got the whole list of other nutrients which are very very essential and each and every nutrient plays a very important and a significant role in the human body now in spite of all these things in spite of having all these nutrients in these two products the eggs and the chicken meat we find that there are a lot of myths about poultry in the sense that there are myths about poultry farming there are myths about how the birds are being produced or they are rare and also there are myths and misconceptions about the products that are available that is the eggs as well as the meat so today let's discuss about some of these common myths which are there and let's see uh, what is the truth behind it you know there's a common misconception about certain myths the first and foremost is you know the hormones now basically common people don't know much about the hormones hormones are something which are synthesized by the body and the entire body is regulated by the hormones themselves the chickens and the broilers the layers the egg production and the meat production whatever we do now that is being produced by using the birds which are bred scientifically in order to get better and better productive performance generation after generation it's a selective breeding that has been carried out over the years and so we get the birds now which produce about 325 eggs in a year or a broiler bird which gives about 2.5 kg plus body weight by the end of 40 days there is no role of any hormone involved in it it is just the selection the breeders have done a wonderful job and it's the selection of the parents selection of the parents you know who would be the uh, the the birds which will be utilized for production of the next generation and because of this there is an improvement no hormones are used neither the hormones are used in egg production nor the hormones are used in meat production basically there is no need basically they are very expensive and we have achieved the progress of productivity in chickens just because of selective breeding accompanied by a good proper care and management and good nutrition which is conducive you know for expressing this particular genetic potential which the birds have because of selection the second and the third myth which you can say is you know is the chicken contains antibiotics or the antibiotic residues well this is a very common myth and 
people believe or people feel that chickens are continuously fed with antibiotics which actually is not the case of course we have to use antibiotics whenever the disease strikes whenever there are bacteria which infect the chickens we have to see and we have to control the bacterial load by using proper antibiotics but those antibiotics are used only for treatment purpose not for preventive purpose and if it is in case of broilers or layers then we have a withdrawal period which is normally followed so the chances of the residues of antibiotics coming in the products are very very minimal the next myth is about the genetically produced birds or genetically engineered birds so to say similar to hormones let me be very clear in telling this to you that we are not using genetically modified or genetically improved bird in terms of genetic engineering in case of poultry production no chickens are produced by genetic engineering now the next myth basically is about the heat production what happens is people believe that in summer you should not eat chicken this in summer you should not eat eggs because that would generate heat in the body basically let me be very frank and tell you that the heat increment in the body is because of the calorific value of the food item now if you take any food item let it be chickens let it be eggs or let it be rice or let it be anything it the calorific value the calorie content of it is variable and that is something which will decide the increment the heat increment the maximum heat increment basically you will find if you are consuming fats or oils so consumption of chicken or consumption of eggs will increase heat in the body is a wrong thing is a misconcept which people basically feel about it next point is about cholesterol a very important point and i have already mentioned a little bit about the cholesterol basically as i said the eggs contain cholesterol the chicken meat contains cholesterol this issue is normally raised in case of eggs because people have a habit of eating eggs every day which is very good and so they they have a fear that uh, the cholesterol content of the body or the blood cholesterol would unnecessarily will will be high basically the blood cholesterol level and the dietary cholesterol level doesn't have a direct relationship there is a feedback mechanism the liver synthesizes cholesterol in the body and whatever cholesterol is consumed by the human beings accordingly whatever is deficit that is only synthesized in the liver and this feedback is received by the liver so the liver generates or liver synthesizes cholesterol depending on the intake of the cholesterol by the human beings so the dietary cholesterol content and the blood cholesterol doesn't have any direct relationship one can consume eggs very very freely unless that feedback is not disturbed and that feedback will be disturbed because of many reasons like you know sedentary lifestyle uh, smoking alcohol but then if you are away from all these things and if you are active your cholesterol consumption should not have any uh, bearing or it doesn't have any bearing with the blood cholesterol levels then about the saturated fats basically all saturated fats raise the blood cholesterol that's what the consumption is but the stearic acid which is a type of saturated fat which is naturally found in poultry products is not harmful at all cholesterol and the hdl cholesterol is also level, very very good and those two are useful for the human body maybe the human nutritionist will speak more about that then the another misconception is about the organic foods yes organic foods are definitely good options but not nutritionally nutritionally the contents nutritional contents of the egg or the chicken meat which is organic and which is non organically produced is more or less same there is no much difference in that there may be or there are certain different ad other advantages of organic foods but then nutrition wise both of them are same only problem with organic foods is they are expensive and our eggs and chicken especially the eggs which is excellent quality protein it is available at a relatively very very cheap price 
the cheap is not a very good word to be used but it's really cheap 5 rupees or 6 rupees is the cost of the egg and the kind of returns which you get from consumption of that particular egg they out to weigh the price by by any means and therefore though they are cheap the source is excellent they are the richest source of protein that's what i would say so if it's organic it will be expensive maybe some people can afford it some people cannot afford it those who can afford can use organic foods to have some other benefits which the organic foods have but nutritionally there is no difference whatsoever then Recently there was a myth or there was a rumor and there were a lot of WhatsApp videos getting circulated about plastic eggs that are available in the market. We have conducted some press conferences and we have proved that those plastic eggs were a false thing. It was a complete rumor. There is nothing like a plastic egg that is available in the market. Basically the egg has got a shell membrane within. There are two shell membranes, inner and outer shell membrane, and those two shell membranes, they remain adhered to the shell in almost entire portion of the egg, except at the broad end, where, you know, they separate from the shell. Now, what happens is, when the egg becomes stale, this shell membrane separates out, and these shell membranes, it looks like a white colored plastic, and people presume wrongly that it's a plastic egg. No, the eggs whatever are produced and available in the in, in in our country are not the plastic things and we have proved it many times uh, and we have also proved it by conducting the press conferences that the plastic eggs is a complete rumor it's a myth plastic egg doesn't exist at all then the consumption of eggs and poultry leads to cardiovascular diseases this is also a myth i would say it all depends on you know how much is the consumption how much is the quantity of the eggs and the meat that you consume now in our country we have relatively less consumption in some of the developed worlds they consume a lot of chickens lot of red meat lot of eggs but in some of the countries non-vegetarian food is their staple diet right so it all depends on how much is the quantity that 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 you consume but depending on the tradition or whatever customs we follow religions which we follow and we have certain restrictions the consumption of eggs and meat which we do is not at all harmful and it doesn't completely cause any kind of a disease cardiovascular disease in case of human beings and then the last is about you know the covid infection covid 19 infection in humans this is something which started somewhere in the month of january itself the rumors started coming and then january february and march was the month where you know we had to really educate people that look this particular uh, coronavirus thing has started somewhere in china in china or in any part of the world there was no rumor whatsoever or there was no 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 evidence whatsoever that consumption of chickens consumption of eggs or consumption of any animal origin product is responsible for transmission of coronavirus we are saying it entire country says it even the government machinery the central ministry also has declared it that this particular coronavirus doesn't get spread through the uh, uh, animal origin products so friends this is something about some of the common myths which are prevailing about poultry poultry production and the poultry products. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.